PW here. Happy New Year, everyone. We made it to 2024. Man, what a year last year. I sure hope that this one is better, as the last one sure took its toll. I hope everyone had a safe and happy New Year's. I hope everyone had a great Christmas. I'm on a couple different forums, and one of the forums had a topic about a guy who was building up an AR-15 and was looking for a scope mount, what he was going to put on the gun. And as I read through, I came to realize that the guy was just spending quite a bit of money on this build, which is fine. You know, we, we all have different disposable incomes that we can invest in things and desires and things we want to do and achieve. But I offered a different perspective and it was it's kind of uh, got a major kibosh and a lot of negative comments came about from it or a few and I feel a lot of it is the mentality of a lot of the newer younger firearms people that we have in the industry today and they're falling for the hype and the well looking for searching for words to be a little bit PC um, anyway let me get to my point is that I'm not a huge fan of these style that you see in front of you here. Most most of them. And I've become a little bit of a fan of some of them. And some of them I really don't like at all and never would advise, never would buy, and I'm even having a hard time getting rid of. Because <laughs> there's some junk here. There's some absolute junk here. And then there's just some cheap stuff. And then there's some inexpensive good stuff. And there's a couple here that are... Well, there's one here that's very expensive. And I defy you to be able to know what makes it more expensive other than probably its brand name. But uh, I just want to show how things have changed and changed recently and your ability to get some really good stuff without having to spend a huge pile of money. So early on when these things were offered, like a lot of people, you know, I, I'd order one quick detach. Okay. Everybody talks about it. It's what you got to have. And, uh, they work on a lever and a spring and they open up and you you push them in and you turn this nut to adjust the tension based on your width and when you get this to snap over so that it feels good to you um good tension they don't they don't hold zero they don't repeat they don't they don't and stay in position they don't hold zero they just they're 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 junk and it's all in how they're made they're just they're junk in the in the mount and i mean that's assuming that this is machined in such a way that it's true and centered and aligned and proper but you, know, you look at things like this and the cap, I mean, it, it doesn't even fit your scope. It doesn't even fit. It, this is a U. And this is a cap. And see that, see here? I mean, look at it. 
this is this is junk and this was a lot more common you know even 10 years ago you got some people who thought they were making upgrades and you know you can see there's a little more machining involved a little more thought went into it maybe it's got they've got locks so when they come together they lock so they won't back out but that wasn't so much a huge problem as it was just the way that they clamp the way they work now this clamps on the other side so like i said it's a little little more a little more went into it but it's still just that little bitty clamping surface on the whole rail and then we have even another aspect here where the where the rings are separate so these you know might align a little better with your scope but they're still far from what i would consider a good so this you know again i consider this junk garbage not worth using or having here's another one and the same as the first style but this had some extra screws because of course extra screws make it extra better um at least these are a little bit more like a regular ring but again the clamping surface design style is such that it's uh this isn't even recessed into the material on the side and it's thin it's just not i mean it might work okay for a air softer maybe for a 22 but it's pretty much junk trash good for nothing because you're going to constantly be chasing your zero or if you take it off expect to put it back on it's not going to go back to where it was so they're just they're they're garbage they're not worth the time and effort goes into them and here's some single styles and then they they, they make these things with adapter so that they'll do 30 millimeter or one inch you know just run just run just stay away you want a one inch by a one inch you want 30 millimeter by 30 you want 34 by 34 don't don't get adapters it's not gonna it's not what you want so all junk we get into a little bit better stuff over here this is a little bit better and you've got a full sized base here but the problem with this one is you've got a mix of pick and and weaver pick is square bottoms you know, like this they're a certain size they're a certain width, they're a certain height. These are round. This is Weaver, but it's designed to be on a pick. So you're gonna get movement, you're gonna get slop. Um, cheaply manufactured, very rudimentary. Again, a, a slight step up from over there because of the, the big rail you've got here and the, the good size screws. So it, it's going to have some clamping force. It's probably going to hold zero better than those. I'm, I'm really assured that it will. But your recoil shoulders are, are round in a square lug. So on a weaver, if these would line up on a weaver, they'd probably be okay. But, you know, just a marginal step up. This came on a scope, I want to say... One of the cheaper brands and it was okay but you want to be weary of nuts on these because and it's not they are cheap and they are not great usually great metallurgically um the quality of the steel used or the cast used for the nuts and you're putting a wrench on here you know even a small you're getting a lot more force and leverage than you think you are. Way more than a little bitty Allen wrench. So 
be aware and don't over tighten these because you can so easily and although it's cheap you can you can break it pretty fast and it, it's pretty much your fault because you didn't need to make it that tight but again pretty much a little better than those but not a lot this is actually a very high dollar unit this is probably 20 years old i can't remember the brand but it came at a time when um pick was just starting so it's you know it's a few years old it's it's a quality unit but you can see the rail on it although it does have flat sides it's not round it does have good flat sides they're narrower than pick so you're going to have a lot of slop it does have a good wide clamp and a really good proper threaded nut and a real proper threaded stud so it gives good clamping force distributed well well shaped well formed you know, proper shaped ring single point single ring for this is for a dot or something like that um, and of course you can get them different colors this is when colors first started in fde and this is this is a pretty good unit here's a brand new from right on this came with that dot that i put on my pistol a few months back that that i showed you guys um this is pick it's it's a little better quality it's probably about the same as this even though it's made much later um the, the ring forms well it's got a pretty small clamping surface but again it's designed for a, a red a small light red dot and for what it is, it's it's pretty good. I'd like to see this bigger. I mean, they got all this material back here. Why didn't they make this longer? You know, make it full. You got all this material. There's no reason it can't be the same as this side. And then you'd have better clamping force. But you know, that's that that's that one. Now here's here's two different sets of rings, and I really like these through the years. These were offered by Nikon. The P series rings, and they're cantilevered style. They came in one inch and thirty millimeters. Good size screws. Yes, they're round, but they were beefy and sized enough to fit properly and pick. And they came with thread locker on the screws, solid mounts. These do not come apart. These are designed in such a way that they slide on. So there's nothing. They do pinch. But they're machined to be very tight, so sometimes you even have to tap them on. So they're very solid. Never had a problem holding zero. Never had a problem with them moving, and they're lightweight. I really like these. This is another set of the same. And I still use a few of these on a few different rifles that have been sub-MOA shooters. These are just one-inchers, and I've made a move to 30 millimeters, so I've got a few of these one-inch sets. And I said they were popular because here's a knockoff. This is a knockoff set of the same exact ring made by a different company. Um, they've been pretty good. And you got to be careful when you buy them because they're, these were about 60, 60 to 70 beans. And these here were like, 25 or 30 beans these are much much less so you can get these for a, a much better cost but they're the quality is iffy as to why are they so much cheaper you know there's not much to those so why are these so much cheaper unless the materials or what they're how they're manufactured makes them less quality so although the point of this video is to say not don't fall for dollars alone in your value it goes both ways you know don't don't pay a cheap price for a real expensive one and don't pay a expensive price for a really cheap one if you follow me so you know i bought these and used them and they're fine 
but they were about half the price of those. And sometimes it's you're just duped because it says they're P-series rings and this is what you get. You know, they outright lie to you. Other times it's uh, it's just they're offered for less money and you look at them and say, okay, yeah, that's what I want. And you don't look close enough and you see it. It's not really a, anything has happened. It's just you're not looking closely before you order. So there's that. And uh, these are hard to find now, but if you do find them, and there's a few brands that are copying these style that they should be pretty good too they, they held up really well for me and now let's move into the modern day stuff and these are a couple of scope rails that i've tried recently this one here came in as a 20 moa and this was offered um discovery port this is it's a cheapie i bought it to try it see how it would work because I wanted something with clamps, I wanted something for pick, and although I knew it was an inexpensive ring set, I looked it over pretty good, and it's got good size screws, you know, proper depth, good lugs, separate built lugs, so they're different material than the ring set, they're not all cast together, so these are hard, harder steel, and this is an alloy. So that's good. Um, I like that. Um, four caps. The, the printing on it is, you know, just to attract you. Um, but it's hasn't been on here long. It hasn't been shot a lot. So I can't really comment to what it's got for longevity or how it's going to hold up. And I don't remember the cost on it offhand. But it's not overly expensive i don't believe it was even close to a hundred dollars here's another one this one is uh, a monstrum comes with a level which i liked um good sized mounts pretty good beef extra lugs now these are cast into this so they're the same material so it's a I don't know if it's steel. Where's my magnet? No, it's not. All right, the screws are, of course. But the studs, although they're they're magnetizing, I think they're because the screws are inside them. And that's another thing. The screws are inside those lugs, greatly reducing their heft and mass and beef because they got a threaded hole through them. Now, yeah, the screw is in there, so the, the mass is replaced to a point. But I wouldn't call these, you know, super solid, rigid, heavy-duty mounts. But for the price, I think for the average guy who doesn't need to go to war, this would probably be fine. And I'm going to use it and try it and see what I come up with, see what it does for me. And the last one here... Is something that's new on the market or recent on the market these are all high and you can get them in different heights you know and you see some of them have holes through them for seeing sights and things these don't but they're offering these at very low mounts because they find that people are using these on all kinds of firearms and oftentimes <coughs> excuse me these are designed for ARs where you need that height because your stock is in line with your barrel and your cheek is that much higher and you're you're not really behind the gun you're kind of on top of the gun <coughs> so higher rings are are required this here is a very low mount I would say on the average of medium to even low with some manufacturers heights of rings so this is a newer style and i wanted to try this because i wanted to put this on the pc carbine and i had a set of 30 millimeter medium rings on it and they were just junk and i didn't want to have a big heavy set 
this is this is also a monstrum so we got steel and we're getting magnetized here but i think it's from the threaded screws that go through this is all an alloy see i'm getting some magnetism there but i'm sure it's from these screws and i got nothing on the scope um so it's it's an alloy it's an aluminum alloy again not going to be super duper durable heavy duty but enough probably four good lugs for a recoil shoulder you can mount them in either direction however you need them to be um, but most of the time they're designed as a cantilever forward and there we go i've talked for 20 minutes on my opinions on these scope bases and ring setups and the ones that you find out there that are going for four and five hundred dollars what what are you paying for what what is why is it costing you so much money why i mean a little bit better machine tolerance okay um they're basically the same materials minor improvements i mean it i'm not saying they're equal by any means but for the average guy you, you just you, you're you invest in a scope i guess is what i'm saying invest your money invest your dollars in the optic spend the money there get a good good base system you know you don't want something that's going to move and slide and twist and change absolutely 100 percent. i'm with you and you got to buy you got to buy something that's going to do that by the way the marks you see on here are marks i put on there when i mount the scope so that you can see if it moves and if you take it off you know where it goes back to so that's just paint marker that i use on all my all my mounts well, i guess i never mount, uh, marked that one but i use them on all my mounts when i mount them so that i know if it's moved and if i remove it and put it back i can put it back where it belongs so just give it some thought you know don't don't blindly drink the kool-aid don't don't think you have to buy that 400 dollars scope ring set when Another good quality company at 150 or 120, it's going to do the same thing. Um, I just, it's, you can see what it is. It's a piece of metal. It's, it's uh, a few pieces of metal. Um, the way things are today with, with machining and machines that make them, I mean, 30 years ago, you, you, you had to spend big dollars to get an accurate rifle. You couldn't, it was, it was just, it was a winning a lottery ticket to, to go in a store and, and buy a rifle that would shoot, you know, under one M MOA. Um, or you had to really, really work on it, you know, bedding and, and pillar bedding and, and taking your time with your loads and cleaning your barrel and working and working and working and working until you finally got something that was pretty good acceptable but today heck you can buy a savage axis for 350 400 dollars off the shelf factory ammo with a hundred dollar bushnell scope and go shoot three quarter of an inch groups it just never happened before and part of that big part of that is machining machines and the ability to make them for less money and better quality and consistency. And that same machining goes into these mounts that we're finding today from companies like Monstrum and many of these other ones. So give them a look. Don't drink the Kool-Aid and think you've got to spend a million dollars to get something that's worthwhile. You, you don't want junk, you know, definite junk. But look at things and... and you know envision and and maybe take a chance um 
Amazon is great because you can return things. You can get your hand and look at it and nope, junk, send it back. No harm, no foul. So that's it. Just a outside the box observation, opinion on some of these mounts. Um, especially right now today, more and more better stuff is coming for a lot cheaper money. All right. God bless everybody. CW out.